Hey everyone, Gobotch here, back with Gobotch Survives, and today, y'all, I'm breaking down Green Hell, a beginner's guide for 2021. This is one of the most unforgiving and hardcore survival uh, games out currently on the market. It's been out for a little while now. They've had a lot of consistent updates, and they have a whole slew of updates coming in 2021. So for you getting in to Green Hell for the first time, or maybe you're just reintroducing yourself back into this dangerous death forest, this rainforest in the Amazon, I will be breaking down 10 tips that will help you and aid you in your survival and give you some well-needed equipment as well. Stay tuned all the way through the end of this video. One of the last points I'm going to point out is three locations you need to visit as soon as possible to find key equipment and possible building starts for your bases to survive your first few nights in green hell without further ado though let's get into the video as always though if you like the video leave a thumbs up comment down below let me know which of these tips you found most useful and make sure if you want to never miss any green hell content or any other survival gaming content subscribe here to go botch survives hit that notification bell as well so you never miss a single upload now let's get into the tips all right starting off with our first point we're talking about coconuts, and they are a must for your survival, and they're just one of the most versatile tools and consumables in our game currently with Green Hell. So basically, uh, first and foremost, when you first find coconuts, you need to seek them out, first and foremost. Find coconuts, and when you first get them, make sure to right-click and drink the coconut water within. That will give you uh, 15 hydration, which is really excellent, uh, just around and about trying to survive. Also, whenever the shell is empty, whenever you need a bidone, basically it's a it's a canteen of sorts, which will house liquid for you. Uh, make sure whenever you have an empty coconut, don't harvest it yet, but take that empty coconut, craft it with a rope, and you'll make a coconut bidone, which will basically be able to house water and uh, various liquids for you. Very helpful before um, you can get the the steel Badone later on, which we'll talk about that later on. Now, after you've made that, you can then start harvesting these coconuts, and it'll turn them basically in. You can eat the raw coconut flesh within. So if you eat the coconut flesh within raw, it will give you some benefits. You'll get five carbs and ten fats raw. And if you cook it, though, cooking it will actually give you better benefits. You still get five carbs and ten fats, but cooked coconut flesh will give you two energy and two sanity. So that's very, very important to you, y'all. Coconut shells, again, moving into point two now, I want to talk about uh, how you can utilize coconuts further on from just consumables. So if you have an excess of coconut shells laying around, you can lay them out on the map at your base, wherever you're holding up and trying to survive. And you can look, basically throw them about on the ground. And whenever it starts to rain and you have lots of wet seasons and dry seasons in this Amazon in Green Hell, but basically it'll collect up to 10 liquid in these shells, which means you can have up to 10 clean water being collected in each of these coconut shells, each of these half shells, which can help you to stay hydrated when you're at your base. I always take a couple of these shells with me when I'm adventuring because you never know when you need to set up a makeshift camp and you can set those out to collect rainwater so you can get your hydration up. Um, another thing moving into point three is make sure you collect bananas. Uh, bananas are one of the ex most excellent sources of carbs in the game. Again, in this food, in the system of food in this game, it's not just eating food and you survive. You have to make sure you have proteins, fats, carbs, and hydration from water. So, collecting bananas, you can always check these out, and you'll see the little extension, and it shows you that there are bananas there to harvest. Make sure to collect all the bananas you can and eat them when you need to. Whenever your carb indicator, which is the yellow indicator on your watch, is getting low, eat these bananas. They give you 25 carbs, making it one of the best and most frequent sources of carbs you'll find out in this rainforest. Now, moving on to the next point here, and this is still talking about food. Point four, make meat soups over cooking meats. Now, there's different benefits for cooking and making soups, but more than not, making soups is a greater benefit and various reasons why. So let's talk about that. Right now, you're getting an example. You're seeing me cook some tapir meat, and then you're also seeing me make tapir meat soup. Um, now, you're noticing 
soups will cook and, and you'll be able to make soups very, very quickly. Um, I could probably make three or four soups in the amount of time it will take me to cook just one of those tapir meats. And that is one of the biggest things. If you're on a time crunch and you're needing to get that food and those resources very, very quickly, um, making soups is a very quick way to do this. Now, of course, this is talking about how useful our coconut shells are. Use those coconut shells or turtle shells, whatever you have. Place them on your campfires, and that way you put water into them. It boils that water, makes it clean. Add the meat to that clean water, and then you'll make these soups. And when you do that, y'all, if you here's the, the difference between the two. So a soup, a tapir meat soup, will give you 90 protein, 26 fats, 10 hydration, and 15 energy, versus if you eat the cooked tapir meat, which takes far longer to cook, remember that, it gives you 80 protein, 24 fats, 15 energy, so uh, very similar, but a little bit less, and 5 sanity, which is actually a plus over the soup. So whichever way you want to spin it, I prefer soups over the cooked meats. Um, the cooked meats will give you a greater sanity, but they do take far longer to make and cook. Uh, so in my opinion, when you can, make soups over cooking your meats. Moving into the next point here, point five, and uh, this is a thing I've found to love in this game. If you can find the Brazilian nut trees around, and they're all over the place, they're one of the biggest trees out there in this Amazonian rainforest, make sure when you find these trees, go loot them, because they give you some of the best, the best mushroom, in my opinion, in the game, which is the blue mushroom. It's not toxic, it won't kill you as long as you're clean. Um, they'll, when you eat these blue mushrooms, they are a godsend for energy. They give you 10 energy per mushroom, which means if you're out and about and your energy levels are getting low, eat these mushrooms. But you know, if you have three or four mushrooms, that's 40 energy, 30 to 40 energy right there. And you're right back out on the hunt trying to uh, find different resources. Another thing that this tree will drop around in the little, uh, around the, the, the circumference of the trunk of the tree will drop Brazilian nuts. If you harvest these nuts and eat the the nut that's been harvested you get 35 fats and two sanity making all what you can get from this tree some of the best resources in green hell currently all right so now moving into point six and now we're going to talk about some of the best starting equipment you can make relatively easily and quickly um, even before establishing your first base in Green Hell, and these will aid you in your survival and also help you be able to collect resources throughout the rainforest. So first and foremost, you're going to want to craft an axe. Not a stone axe, but an axe, which is a better variant of it. So basically, if you want to make an axe, you need to make sure you have one stick, two small stones, which you can harvest from big stones, and one rope. Doing that will give you the axe, which is... A very useful tool. It will last you more than the stone axe will. And honestly, it, it hasn't failed me. It, make, it makes a big difference for me. So the, get the axe, one stick, two stones, one rope. That will net you the axe. Now, moving on from that now, make sure you make a bow. Making the bow is relatively easy. All you need is one long stick, which you can get from cutting down any of the skinny trunk trees. Whenever you see the long sticks on the ground, hover over it, right click, hit craft, add a rope to that long stick, boom, you have a bow. Now all you need to do is make some arrows for it using small sticks and two feathers, and you'll have your bow and arrows, which are some of the best weapons you can have early game to be able to hunt and take down the natives if they do come around and try to uh, attack you and take you out. Now moving on to the third item, which I think is the biggest item you need early on, and we're talking about spears. You need to make sure you make yourself a stone spear as soon as possible. Stone spears are really easy to make. All you need to have is a long stick, which I've already told you how to get those, cutting down one of those skinny trunk trees, collect a long stick, add a rope to the long stick, and then you need to add a stone blade. To make a stone blade, all you need to do is craft two stones together. That makes a stone blade. So once you have your stone blade, add that to the long stick, add that to your rope. You now make a stone spear which in my opinion is one of the best early game weapons and something I use actually throughout the game until I'm able to get the tribal spear. So with those three things all in your possession, you should be able to survive relatively easily around this rainforest, assuming you take care and you uh, make sure to pay attention to your surroundings. Now moving on, 
2.7 and this is more about base crafting and, and building you need to make sure early on as soon as you can and you come across water when you go up to the water right click on it and you'll see three options there you can drink you can wash yourself or you can take mud take the mud what this will do you can drop it as soon as you take it but what this will do will open up basically in your survival guide all of the crafting options that you can get from mud which means you can now make mud walls, you can make the mud furnace and forge, uh, you can make the, the mud water collector and shower, all the things with mud. Again, mud currently in Green Hell is the basically the final tier. Uh, you have bamboo and banana leaf and, and uh, palm leaves and all that type of stuff, but mud is the thing that goes on top of all those and makes it st sturdy and more stable and will actually help with defense against the tribes and uh, the jaguars and pumas all around in this rainforest. So make sure as soon as possible, take mud. That way you get those blueprints ASAP. Now moving on to point eight, you need to find these three uh, herbs basically around the rainforest as soon as possible. You need to find Molinera, which is a yellow leaf. Uh, you'll see it's green and it has this yellow uh, flower blossoming from it. Make sure you cut that down. This will give you Molinera, which you can then craft and turn into bandages which are crucial if you ever get an abrasion, a scratch, or anything like that. You need to cover it up as soon as possible. So make sure you have a healthy supply of Molinera because then you can make your bandages. If you find this purple leaf, you get a lily, which will help if you make the lily. Uh, you take that and you craft that with your bandage. That will make a uh, basically a, a lily bandage. And what this will do will help with rashes and stings and bites if you get stung by bees, if you get stung by, um, you know, let's say, ants. Instead of that turning into a festering rash, then you can put this lily bandage on it and it will take care of that with no problem at all. The third thing is the tobacco leaf. This is a pink leaf. If you uh, harvest this and add it to the Molinera bandage, this will give you a tobacco bandage. And then if you place that, that will take care of venom. So anti-venom, if you get stung by a stingray, uh, snakes, the goliath spider, um, scorpions, any of those things that have venom and give you venomous bites, make sure you put the tobacco bandage on that and that will take care of the venomous thing. You will we'll still have a fever, but you can take care of that fever if you just hydrate and sleep. So make sure you use those bandages to, your, your, uh, to the best of your abilities, but find those when you're out and about in the wilderness. Just keep an open eye for those various colored plants. That way you can harvest them for those particular Bandages. Now, point nine, we're getting into combat now, y'all. Again, this is a hardcore survival game. Make sure to aim for the head. This should go without saying, but we're going to say it anyways. Headshots or a one-shot kill in green hell. If you aim for the head with the arrow or with your spear, if you're throwing the spear, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a puma, if it's a jaguar, if it's one of the tribal members, if you hit them in the head, it's dead. Um, and that make sure that you do that at all times because it may be the difference between you living or dying and also may be the difference between you losing some arrows or not so make sure to aim for the head because it's a one shot kill every single time and that brings us to our final point here ladies and gentlemen point 10 and i'm going to give you three locations you need to find as soon as possible on your map in green hell and map one and first and foremost y'all go to the drug facility this is at 50 degrees west and 27 degrees south so when you pull up your watch clicking f you pull up your watch and you can scroll to get to the coordinates which is basically your compass you'll see your location with degrees west to south you need to keep following your compass until you get to 50 degrees west 27 degrees south you'll come across this site the drug facility here you will be able to find some tribal arrows around in the uh, the interior of the, the base. You'll also have a chance of finding the Rusty Axe, which is a random spawn in survival modes, but you may have a chance to find the Rusty Axe, which is a non-craftable axe, one of the best axes in the game that has some of the best durability in the game as well. You'll also be able to find there's already beds made for you. There's um, food and different supplies that are in duffel bags as well. There's also a painkiller, a uh, little first aid box as well, where you can get painkillers, which are great for any life or death situation you may come across. But um, the biggest thing for me here is you find the cooking pot, which is the best uh, water collector slash pot to be able to store food in the game. Uh, you find the cooking pot there, and you find near the campfire site 
a map, which then you can kind of chart and figure out where you need to go, um, which is very, very key and very, very important. And also the drug facility makes for a pretty good base. If you want to set up camp there, you can add on to it. Um, it's a pretty good base site, so that's an, a place for you if you wish to build a base. Uh, the drug facility is solid. Now moving on to another location is the fishing dock. This is at 51 degrees west and 19 degrees south. So if basically, if you go from the drug facility and you just go straight north, um, you're going to find yourself at the fishing dock. It's right on basically the, the coast, the coastline. So if you keep going north there, you get to the fishing dock. Excellent location here. Again, you can build a base here to add on to it if you wish to. There are beds already established. There's a water collector as well. There's also a little fish trap there as well where you can catch angel fishes and different type of fish that you can add to your campfires. But the biggest thing you need to keep an eye out for here, you can find a four-pronged spear, which is a good little starter weapon. But more than that, if you look on off the dock, if you look at the little boat that's up on the harbor there, there's a chance that the rusty machete will spawn. Now, when I'm recording here, uh, the, the machete did not spawn for me, but there's a chance that the rusty machete will spawn at that site there at the fishing dock. So, makes for a good location to start a little base there, but also you can get some really important equipment early on. And there's also different food and stuff in duffel bags as well there at the fishing dock. Now, the final location, and this is not a place you want to build a base, but it's a pivotal and very crucial place you need to find early. This is the crashed Jeep. This is at 44 degrees west, 17 degrees south. Very, very important location, y'all. Basically, you can follow these mud tracks for tire tracks throughout the Amazon on map one, and it will lead you right to it. But if you go to those coordinates, 44 west, 17 degrees south, you will find yourself at this crashed Jeep site. Very important because you get painkillers there. You get lots of different food items there. But the biggest thing is the badon, basically the big canister that can house 100 liquid. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to grab that. And there's also the grappling hook there as well. Very, very important item that you need in this game because it houses 100 liquid, ladies and gentlemen, which means that you can have lots of clean water in there, meaning that you never have to worry about hydration as long as you are taking care and collecting clean water when and where possible. But that's going to do it for your beginner's guide and green hell in 2021, ladies and gentlemen. Follow those guides. Follow those 10 steps, those 10 tips, and you should be able to relatively survive easily. Again, make sure when you're out there surviving in green hell, pay attention to your surroundings, listen, and keep your eyes open, and you may just make it as a survivor in the green hell forest. But y'all, if these helped you out at all, I would appreciate you letting me know down in the comment section. Leave a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more coverage for green hell and other survival games here on GoBot Survives. Subscribe so you never miss out. Hit that notification bell, but y'all, stay safe and well. Happy, happy new year, and we'll see you back here in the next video. Y'all take it easy.